Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and I'm up in the front room uh, at my piano. I got a question about uh, Philip Glass's piano etudes the other day, and I thought I would take a look at number six, because that's what we had been speaking about. Uh, this may not have direct interest to, you know, most of you, but for those of you who play piano and who are interested in sort of approaching the etudes, because they're not super difficult. I mean, Glass wrote them for his own pianistic education. It's it's well worth taking a look at them individually. So today we'll just kind of dig into number six a bit. It's uh, pretty playable. <laughs> piano etudes and and there are 20 and they're divided in two books of 10 the first book is from much earlier in in glass's career and the second group of 10 from later and they kind of have a sense of starting a little bit easier to play and getting a little bit more involved but the truth is they're not ever terribly difficult to play if you can read a little bit like much of glass's music there are no key signatures, but sometimes the metrical schemes are complicated. And in the case of number six, we've got a metronome marking of 132, which I'm not going to try to achieve in this conversation, and a um, time signature of 6-4, six beats in a measure. And the first couple of measures are an introduction. This is typical, and it kind of does this little oscillation or back and forth. <laughs> Six, a very simple F minor chord. The chord progression is one which is really familiar to us from Glass's music. There's a minor one chord and then the major six chord. Five chord, flat seven chord, and then the dominant bit of the five chord. That was E, G, B flat. The very first thing that happens melodically is a repetition. And we've got a bunch of Fs in a row just sitting there underneath the chord progression. Now I'm playing this 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. When I have repeated tones, I like to use a bunch of different fingers even when I'm doing it. I suppose I could do this like a woodpecker. But the instruction is to use differing fingers. You can even go 4, 3, 2, 1 if you're really, you know, detail-oriented. So that's going to be on eighth notes as well. And listen to the F against the C major chord. It's kind of a biting sound, isn't it? Yeah. And then a new note against the G chord, G, oscillation to this. The middle note is moving back and forth in the scale, so we have a little bit of animation, I'll put it that way. Same thing here. Same thing here. time for that glass triplet, that glass two against three. This is going to continue, but on that beat in the right hand is triplets. And what we have is two against three. That second note is in between. So up to speed it would sound like so. go to this 
part, which is just, the, I think, my favorite bit. There's a really strong change rhythmically. That triplet gives way to a straight eighth feel, and we've got this big moment. It's this marked forte, a big F chord, and now the melody. Against that big bass. That's kind of as low as I can go to a D flat down there. It's great. And then the same thing C, E flat, the diminished chord. Altogether, it's large. right? Glass is really taking advantage of the full range of the piano. And that's an exciting part about this piece. So this flow goes from that triplet feeling to a straight eighth feeling. Let's see if we can sort of get a sense of how that might work. So here's our triplet. and really expressive. It has a lot of power, and I think he's making us kind of work. There are a couple of classic challenges here for us as pianists. The repeated tones at some speed. He wants some velocity. And then these big leaps. I mean, I'm sight reading, and I'm, yeah, I'm not doing so great with it. But I think with practice, it could be really exciting and fun. It's just something super great about... Glass loves repetition. We've got that same set of business again and again. And then we have a whole separate middle section, which features that same oscillation in the left hand, six beats. And against that, triplets in the right hand, triplets on two notes. So one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. And it sounds great. And then this gorgeous chord here, this is an E major chord and a G, so two strongly dissonant tones against the left hand chord. Another dominant chord, this is a D dominant chord. Really spicy, again, the flat nine, and then a little melodic line. He takes it one step further and creates a five note phrase. In that triplet feeling against the left hand. insight into the thinking of, of glass. And in fact, etudes traditionally have always been an insight into uh, the compo any composer's 
way of um, imagining what music and, and how harmonies work and how melodies and rhythms kind of lock together. Etudes are designed to teach. Etude literally means study. It's a way of thinking about music. We're teaching the, uh, if we write an etude, we're teaching people how to play our ideas. Think about writing etudes for yourself. And it's not a bad idea to look at the etudes of other composers as well in order to sort of absorb their concepts. Well, I hope it's been useful to take a look at this. Subscribe to the channel. Listen, I love what's going on right now and uh, love hearing from you. So I'll see you next time.